Good afternoon, or possibly good morning, or good evening, to you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Mouth Dancing with your host Young. I'm sitting in a different chair from usual today, and I think it's influencing me, like the way I talk or things that come to mind. I think it's affecting me in that way because, you know, you get you develop habits, right, and then it makes you behave a certain way. And I kind of broke that habit today by sitting in a different chair, and it's like sending different vibes to my mind or something. And my brain waves are different from usual, I think, because of it. You might not notice a difference, you know, listening to the podcast, but I can sense it, and I'm the one who's talking, so I'm the one who gets to decide that, not you. Anyway, I was thinking the other day about. You know the bow and arrow. It's like a weapon, right? But why do they call it a bow and arrow? It makes it sound like there's just one arrow, right? Then you just like shoot it, and then you go and pick it up, and you keep shooting the same arrow over and over again. But I think most of the time people have more than one arrow, right?、You、probably have a quiver full of arrows. Like if you ever watched the Olympics archery event. I think they usually have some sort of a quiver of arrows, or maybe some sort of a, a container that holds their arrows, and it's usually more than one. I mean, so why don't they call it a bow and arrows? Wouldn't that make more sense? A bow and arrow. Maybe they came up with that name a really long time ago when humans had to make bow and arrows by hand, you know, and probably took a really long time to make like one arrow. Imagine how much time that would take to to carve it, and then put like an arrowhead on it or whatever. Maybe some feathers on the back. So maybe they did kind of have just one arrow back, you know, in the day when when they were coming up with a name for this weapon. So maybe that's why it's called a bow and arrow instead of bow and arrows, right? It's like、oh, I'm going to go get my bow and arrow, and when someone says that. They're not just going to go get one single arrow and a bow, because that would be ridiculous. But yeah, I was just thinking about that the other day, and it, I just thought it was kind of funny. Bow and arrow, bow and arrows. Maybe just a bow, right? You don't even have to mention the arrows because everyone knows you use a bow to shoot arrows, or you shoot arrows from a bow, right? You don't have to say, "I'm going to go get my gun and bullets," right? Because it's just obvious that if you get a gun, you're going to be shooting bullets with it, most likely. I mean, you could also be shooting shotgun shells or BBs or something, but but you don't usually list the type of ammunition that it's going to be shooting out, right? Everyone knows it's some sort of hard projectile of some sort, right? You don't say I'm going to go get my cannon and cannonballs, or you know, my rocket launcher and rocket. Because what else would a rocket launcher launch, right? So people should just start calling it a bow instead of a bow and arrow, because it's just kind of unnecessary verbiage, and it's kind of time-consuming to have to say that all the time. And also, it's just wrong. You don't usually have just one arrow, so. Also, I was thinking about the、um, the invention of fire. Would you call it an invention or maybe a, a, a discovery? It's kind of like the wheel, right? People say it was invented, but the wheel seems like a discovery just for all of humankind, right? Like it's just something that people would have figured out anywhere. Can't really say one person invented it. But yeah, the fire. There must have been. A first person to discover fire, right? Because in the beginning, there weren't that many humans 
and we weren't all over the earth. It was just like a small group of humans, probably. And one of them must have discovered fire at some point, and they were probably freaking out about it, you know, kind of ooking and eking about it, like like primates, you know, because that's what we are. And they started using it to do stuff like cook or just keep warm at night when our are on cold days. But yeah, the the invention of fire, whoever came up with that, they don't get much credit for it, do they? Every time you use fire, you we're all, you know, deeply indebted to this person. And we should be thanking them somehow. Maybe doing some sort of little prayer or some sort of a ritual or something to express our gratitude. But we don't do that. We just use it willy-nilly, we just kind of take it for granted. People even use fire to do evil things like, you know, arson, or they're just pyromaniacs, they like burning shit. I knew some kids like that growing up who just liked to play with fire, which was super dangerous, right? Like they would pour gasoline in a field and make like a shape with it, you know, maybe they would spell something out like fuck or something, some bad word maybe, or... If you draw some sort of a, a nasty picture like a penis or something and light it on fire and then just watch it burn. Um, doesn't seem very respectful of fire, does it? Or the person who discovered it. Well, I guess fire doesn't really belong to humans, does it? It's just sort of a natural... It's kind of an element, right? That we can use. We can harness it sometimes to our benefit. Sometimes to our detriment. It's something that should be revered and loved. But you know, you just flick on your stove anytime and just cook something, right? And you don't say, hey flame, I really appreciate you. You just take it for granted that it's going to come out and cook your food. Just kind of nasty behavior. Very rude and just uncivilized and selfish and we should start you know being more respectful of fire and the first person who discovered it for our use I don't want to drag that out too long because it's starting to sound kind of preachy right and uh, I don't want to be a preacher that's not the intent of this podcast I just wanted to increase awareness about that that's all and finally I saw this tweet the other day on Twitter, right? And someone jokingly said, here's why you should smoke. And the answer was, it looks cool. And they had a picture of someone smoking, supposedly looking really badass, right? And it just got me thinking, does smoking really look cool? I beg to differ, actually. I mean, it kind of just looks like if you're smoking a cigarette, it kind of just looks like you're like sucking a really thin penis to me. It doesn't really look that cool. It looks kind of stupid, actually. Like you keep putting this little tube in and out of your mouth and sucking on it and blowing out smoke. You could smoke something larger like a cigar, which would increase the sort of sucking appearance of it. Like it would look like you're just sucking on a sort of like a penis at that point and you just keep putting it in and out of your mouth and you're just enjoying this oral fixation thing you got going on and yeah it just looks weird it doesn't really look that cool particularly to me people love to use it in like books or movies or art they like to depict people smoking because it's supposedly cool looking but Yeah, I mean, what are you guys' thoughts on this? Does it actually look that cool? I think it looks kind of goofy. Also, they would, in the old days, they would have someone sucking on like a piece of hay or something, like a piece of straw, or a, or maybe even a straw, drinking straw, and supposedly that was cool looking. But that looked kind of stupid too, in my opinion. I mean, when people just chew on things like that or, or I don't know, smoke things, it... It seems kind of childish to me, like, it just reminds me of a little kid 
chewing on a piece of grass or something and having this weird oral fixation thing. It's like a nervous habit or I don't know what to call that. Some sort of a twitch almost. Like you gotta just put this thing in your mouth over and over again. I don't need to mention all the negative health effects because everyone knows about that and I don't want to preach about that either, so. I just wanted to discuss smoking itself. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in again. I really and truly appreciate it from the depths of my heart. My heart's not that deep though, because a human heart, I don't know what the size is exactly, like the average size of a human heart is... And it's not that big of an organ, right? I mean, it's pretty big and it's very important, but... I mean, our brains are bigger, I think, in our lungs and... Our stomachs and our skin. So when someone says from the depths of their heart... I don't know, I don't take it that, as that big of a compliment, because your heart's not, like, this huge thing, right? That's really deep. Maybe they mean it, like, in a metaphorical sense, right? Either way... I, I want to express my appreciation, you know, from the bottom of my heart, maybe. Even the bottom of my heart is not that deep down. It's unless I'm talking about it figuratively. In which case, I guess I am. That's what I mean, figuratively, not literally, because my heart is not that big of an organ, like I said earlier. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. Bye.